Hi, how's it going? This is Adam L with Adam L Photography and Okinawa Vision. Uh, today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a little photo review video uh, where I'm going to look at some photos from uh, a couple of photographers and uh, give my little feedback from what I uh, what I like, what I don't like, or perhaps uh, some suggestions on what I would change in the editing or in the composition, etc. Uh, today, Reef's here with me. She's going to help me out because uh, she's got a hell of a good eye for photography. So she's going to be here as my little uh, backup. She'll only speak when she's really got something to say. Um, so we're going to start off now with some photos uh, from a photographer, M. Young, um, who sent me in uh, five uh, images. Now, this first one of a young girl here. Um, I really, really like it. Um, there's a couple of things compositional wise that I would change on this photo, but uh, in general it's quite a nice photo. And just looking at the, the specs here, we're shooting at one uh, oh, 16 hundredth of a second, f4.5, and this is on an EF18 to 55, three and a half to five six IS. So I'm, I'm guessing that's a, that's a Canon lens, and that would be a kit lens from the looks of it. Shooting it at 36 mil, which is a really nice focal length, uh, 1600 a second. Yep, ISO. Yep, wonderful. Um, okay, so uh, what I would change about this photo, the only thing I would change about this photo is the composition. Um, basically, uh, as you can see, her eyes here are looking off to the side um, of the frame. Had she been not here, but over here, looking this way, it would have a much bigger dramatic impact um, than it does at the moment. Uh, still a wonderful moment, gorgeous little kid, uh, perfectly exposed, nice shallow depth of field. I, I love the fact that uh, the cropping that has occurred in the frame has occurred across the top of the head and not across the bottom of the face. That's a, a really important uh, part of photography. So all I can say that I would change with this particular photo is just when you're shooting it, I would have just moved the camera slightly across to uh, put the subject over here in the, uh, the left side of the frame so that uh, where the eyes are going they're looking towards an empty space rather than looking towards the edge of the frame. It looks like uh, she's been compressed in there a little bit but for the first photo, yes, that's really quite nice. What else have we got? Second photo here, okay, we've got a, uh, a pregnancy photo, a nuptial shot here. Uh, this looks like it is done against a backdrop and in, maybe into a studio. Uh, we've got the ribbon tied around the belly, hands in there. Yep, okay. Um, not a huge fan of this particular shot. Let me just switch over into develop mode here and I'll uh, I'll show a couple of things that I might do to adjust that. One of the things I'm not a fan of uh, is just, just the way the ribbon is all the way up here in the in the top again. We need to really look at uh, the rule of thirds here. So with the rule of thirds, uh, basically what you want to do is, I'll put this grid on here, the, as you can see, the, the screen is, is uh, now divided into all these uh, nine frames, these nine uh, squares, all these basically one third, two thirds, three thirds, and then again across the vertical axis, one third, two thirds, three thirds. So by putting your focal point here, which is slightly up in the middle and out of the shot, it really detracts from the impact of the shot. So what I would have probably have done with this is either crop it down like this and add a little bit more impact to the shot there. For, your eyes are drawn more into the ribbon and to the belly here than they were before. And just uh, a personal preference for me, maybe just you've overcooked the highlights a little bit here. So I might drop those back a little bit, which is going to be hard because this is a JPEG, so I can't really edit it uh, too much. But uh, maybe come over onto the luminous sliders here and just bring back those those highlights a little bit something along those lines and just for my personal preference I would kind of mute the colors a little bit not too much but just a little bit um, maybe just for the hell of it a little big netting but not a huge fan of doing that too much something in a roundabout there. This photo would also I think personally have a, um, a really good impact if it was just straight up black and white maybe do some of that and bump up the contrast a little bit. But other than that, um, yeah, so I'll just uh, reset that back to the way it was. So yeah, as you can see, the, your, eyes are, your eyes don't want to focus up here. Um, uh, just naturally, the way it would go, and not trying to be a sexist male here or anything, but my eyes would go more towards this area here. And for the photo, we really want to be seeing up at the stomach. So 
with that photo, um, I would definitely uh, re yeah definitely want to look at the rule of thirds a little bit more there. Um, another thing that I I like that cropping that I did before is just to get rid of these these little shadows that you've got here, the fall off from the light. Now, if you're shooting against a background like that, what you can do to avoid that is just to bring your subject further away from the actual background. Don't have them standing right close to the background. And then when the shadow does fall off from the body, it softens over distance and you'll get uh, a much softer look, not so much of a hard edged shadow like you have here. So that's what I would change with that one. And we're going to move along. Okay, so we've got some, some rose petals. Um, yep, this is great again. Um, you know, I can see what you're going for again, but again, we're going to come in with the rule of thirds here. Amy, I'm just going to just try something a little bit different. I'm going to put the center, which is, I think this piece here is the focal point. I'm going to drop that into one of the axis of the thirds and do something along those lines. And this again, is this is all personal preferences. This is not necessary for what you have to do. I might just vignette that a little bit just so I can push out the, the highlights there a little bit more and maybe just drop down a few of the highlights, drop up a little bit of the shadows. Something along those lines. Um, but again, with this particular photo, um, yeah, while it's uh, while it's quite it's quite nice to shoot the the photos of the rose petals um, in this particular shot here. Um, you've got uh, some damage to the petals. This is a bit of a dead looking petal here, over here as well. Um, I would have probably yeah I would have probably pulled those pieces out of the shot and just tried a little bit of recomposition with that. Maybe even uh, look towards doing a macro shot if you want to look into this kind of photography. Um, if you don't own a macro lens you can always get the um, uh, the, the tubes, the, the macro tubes which you can uh, connect to your camera and it will bring uh, the, the, the rear element of the lens and, the, and your uh, sensor further apart and create a macro uh, style shoot. It's not like a macro lens but it, it gives you a really really shallow depth of field and it can, uh, can really uh, improve this kind of photography. Um, myself I'm just not a big fan of, uh, of, of shooting rose petals and, th and flowers and stuff like that but again this it's just it's too busy for me that's a little bit too busy but I do see what you're trying to do there and yeah with it with the kit lens and that that can be uh, can be quite a difficult shot but uh, you're almost there almost there. Okay, this one is a lot better. I'm liking this one a lot better. Um, yeah, okay, this one, yeah, much better. Again, I, I, I probably just, just personal preference, I would maybe try to tone it away from being dead center in the frame. Uh, but I like the purple down here too, so maybe not. I'm not sure. Yeah, no, yeah, I'll tell you, I think, yeah, I think that's, it's a nice shot, that one. I do like that one. The coloring's nice. Um, yeah, everything in there is pretty nice. It's a little bit soft in the focus, but that adds to it. It adds a lot of dimension to this photo. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give that one. A, that's a nice looking photo there. Okay, and okay, we've got a jungle kind of shot here. This is, it's interesting. It's There's a nice flare coming in off the top side here. Um, but the problem with these kind of shots, and I've taken these myself when I first started out with photography as well. And the problem is, is that there's no focal point. There's no particular place that your eye is going to go to in these shots. So uh, this would make a fantastic back background for a portrait, but as just a photo by itself, uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing in particular that the eye is really drawn to because there's so much stuff to look at in the photo. Um, you could sometimes do something like put in like a really heavy big net, something along those lines to really draw the eye and give that sensation of like a tunnel vision that can kind of help out a little bit, but um, yeah, definitely you, you want something in there, whether it be a flower, whether it be a person, um, something that grabs the focus from the, uh, from the eye when you're looking at the photo. Okay, so those are the shots there from uh, M. Young. Look, I really like, really, really like the shot of this kid. This is, it's a gorgeous kid, it's a great shot. Everything, you know, you've got all the, the fundamentals down really well in this shot, so that's fantastic. Um, overall, uh, yep, you're on your way. You've got uh, you've got a solid beginning going on here. Um, 
yeah, uh, just keep at it, keep working at it, keep that shallow depth of field going. Maybe look into picking up a, uh, a 1.8 prime lens. Uh, I'm, I'm a Nikon shooter, not a Canon shooter, so I'm not sure what they have on their market, but for example, Nikon have a 35mm 1.8 prime lens for their AFC sensors, the crop sensor cameras, and it's a couple of hundred dollars and it's a beautiful, beautiful lens. I own one myself. Something like that in, in Canon as well. Have a look at one of those lenses and, and I, I really would suggest so just start putting more time into these these kid portraits because there's uh, there's definitely you've got an eye for that uh, I can really see that eye there so that's really good I'm gonna wrap that one up there Reef any thoughts no Reef's not really talking right now she's just having a little chill on the couch and we're going to move along now to our next contributor which is Mike okay Mike has sent me in five photos as well I'm gonna start with this one here all uh, right, so we got a portrait of a little girl. Beautiful shot. Really, really like this shot. Um, again, the only thing I would say is her eyes are looking off to the left and she's in the left of the frame. I think this shot here would have another 20%, uh, 30% more impact if she was in the right-hand side of the frame and she was looking off to the left. Uh, or vice versa, she was looking to the right and she was in the left-hand side of the frame. Always try to keep the eyes are looking towards the the bigger space of the photo in my opinion it really really adds impact to the photos and it really draws the eye in um, rule of thirds here is, is in full play um, if we bring it over to develop mode and put up our grid you can see her face is right there on the axis of the rule of thirds so beautiful shot really liking that one um, nothing much else to say great processing, uh, processing there giving that nice soft look a little bit of uh, cross processing from the looks of it lovely shot and let's move on to the next one. All right, so we've got uh, some marines coming up a hill. Um, okay, yeah, this is this has got a lot of potential, but it's got a few little misses in my opinion. Uh, one point that's a miss is you've got all this empty space here at the front, and we're cutting off the top of the flag here. I would have preferred to have seen the flag all the way to the top and a little less space down the bottom. Um, you could even possibly just do something like that and cut away a little bit of that mess to make it look uh, tighter on the frame. Um, and then the second problem which jumps out at me here um, is that the, the center where, where your focus, your eyes want to focus is really dark. So what I would probably do with something like this is just increase the light a little bit, bring up the shadows a little bit and then come down to a vignette and just bring down those edges a little bit more something along the lines of that maybe just make it a little bit softer but a little bit darker cross the midpoint in a little bit more add that and i think something like that it just brings your eyes into the center a bit more and you can really focus especially on this man here he's got this uh this quite intense look on his face um but i do i do like this photo a lot um uh, i love the expressions going on here uh, uh this man in this side here looks like he's uh He's putting in some effort. This guy looks like he's just in his own zone. And this guy here looks like he's actually having a great time. So you mix that together and the, the, the lines drawing off into there, really nice composition. But again, I would just, just those couple of little, uh, little changes I think would add the impact. I'll hit reset here just to show you. So we've gone from that to that. I think there's a little bit more impact there. And also with a shot like this, you could grunge it up a little bit because it is kind of a, a grungy and dirty kind of looking shot and everyone's like mean and tough. You could crank up your clarity a little bit as well and just uh, just add that little bit of sharpness to the edges to give it a bit more impact. But other than that, great shot. Okay, what have we got next? All right, I love this shot. Uh, Mike, this is bang on. Uh, the expression on the girl's face is awesome. Uh, she is possibly your daughter. I'm not sure. She looks like she's had a photo taken a whole bunch and she's ready to go and play in the park. Love the expression. Great shallow depth of field in there. Lots of bokeh. Um, unfortunately, we haven't got any of your metadata coming through, so I can't really check what your settings were. But yeah, you've got it nailed there. Um, really, really uh, a lot of emotion in this shot. That's a great shot. Again, uh, I can see the, the post. You've got uh, a little bit of the... Uh, um, uh, what's it called now? My mind. I'm just drawing a blank now. The uh, completely draw, drawing a blank. Uh, I said it before, but um, the type of processing. Um, uh, don't you hate that when your mind says like split toning? Sorry, split toning kind of uh, processing on it, which really adds that uh, sort of like more of a vintage, more of a 
uh, emotive feel, especially for these kind of portraits that are shot in natural light. Great shot, loving it. Moving on. Okay, again, loving this shot, but a little bit with the composition. What I would probably want to do with this shot here is, again, empty a little bit of that space out from underneath so that uh, we, we compress the frame a little bit. We want to be able to, we'd, if we're going to cut the top of something off here, we want to make it look like we had to cut the top off. It was all that would fit in. Uh, second problem I would find with this shot, uh, unfortunately, because I really like the fact that these guys are standing here off to the side, but at the same time, there's just no space here uh, in front of this guy's face. So I would be very tempted to just trim him in a little bit. Nah, not even know that. No, I wouldn't do that. Um, yeah, I would like to have just seen a, a little bit extra room just coming off to the side here. I know it's not always possible uh, with the framing, with the position and everything like that. But, alright, that's the negative stuff I would talk about. What, um, the other way you could do just to, just to lessen that impact is just take a graduation filter, bring it out like so, like so and just darken that down a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit, just so that your eye stays really nice and focused here on this guy with the flag, because that's where the, the focal point of the photo is. And timing is bang on. Look at it. he's got this really straight-legged stance here. It's very intense. He's very his body's very rigid. He's very much in into what he's doing, and that really comes across that this is something you know quite serious. Even though I'm I'm, I'm not aware, I'm not up to date on the Marine Corps. Uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, ceremonies and etc. I can, I can see that this is something that, uh, that everyone's taken very seriously. Uh, this guy's arm here is very rigid. Uh, fantastic, yeah, I really like it. Perfect, uh, perfect focus. Um, lovely depth of field, really spot on, mate. That's a really good mic, I'm liking that. Okay, and now we've got a wicked looking sunset. A lot of rays coming out here. Yeah, okay, that's, uh, that's really nice. So let's just, bring it up here. Okay, one thing I'm going to mention here, when you typically when you're shooting a landscape, um, you don't want your horizon to be bang in the center of the frame. And right here, your horizon is bang in the middle. Sometimes it's okay, but usually it's not. So what I would do is look at this photo and I'd see the sky has got tons of impact. The front, even though it has this awesome water, uh, is quite dark and I would be tempted just to trim that frame up a little bit to about here, drop it in something like that and definitely would be more interested in bringing up some of those highlights uh, and just brightening it up a little bit. It's just a little bit too dark. Um, you could, if you don't want to lose the sky so much, you could bring in maybe just a, a slight grad filter. Again, this is, this is all JPEG, so I can't really do much to it. But yeah, I would I'd be tempted just to bring up a little bit of that shadow, just, just lighten it a little bit. Again, that's personal preference. The photo itself, though, is... Uh, is really good. Um, it's a an awesome moment. I really like the moment, and um, yeah, really impressed with that. Really good shot there, Mike. Um, okay, so let's uh, see what else you've got there. Okay, no, that was the five photos. All right, that's fantastic. Really enjoyed. Um, really enjoyed those photos. Uh, so, to my two contributors today, we've got. Uh, uh, M. Young and Mike, you both did a really good job. You both have your strong points. Uh, I, I can see that, uh, Mike, you're a lot more uh, further along in your photography than M. Young, but you're both uh, going really well with your work. I'm really impressed with your work. Um, yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much for sending in these photos. It was wonderful to check out and see uh, what other photographers are doing and be able to throw my two cents in there. If you'd like to uh, have uh, your photos uh, looked over by me with a bit of feedback in uh, our next video, feel free to send me five photos, as long as they all fit in one email, I don't care about the size or format, to critique me, that's all one word, critique me at bluepacificmedia.com. And uh, yep, I'll email you back when, uh, when your episode is going to be online. This is Adam L, and happy shooting. Rafe? She's still sleeping. Ha, ha, ha.